Greetings, friends. This week, we've been thinking a lot, at least I have, on the baptism of Jesus. And it has so much to do with us. And it's such a multifaceted event in Jesus' life that means a lot of different things on different levels. And the first level that we see is in Matthew. If you want to have some fun, look to the first seven chapters of Matthew and compare the narrative of Jesus with the narrative of what we know of Israel in Genesis and Exodus and all the parallels. And you'll see that that Matthew constructed his his uh, life early life of Jesus in the beginning of his ministry um, on the pattern of what we have of ancient Israel. And what he's really saying here, Matthew, is that Jesus is the ultimate Israelite. He is the fulfillment of Abraham and all the promises. He is the one who got it right in life. And the ancient rabbis even said that there could just be one person who actually was sinless and got it right the whole world could be saved, and they were right, because that's exactly what is happening with Jesus. And so uh, in that narrative, we see that the baptism of Jesus corresponds to the Israelites passing through the Red Sea. And the baptism and the passage of the Red Sea are, are definitely parallel in the Bible. And then we have the fact that there has to be, in the ancient world, ancient Hebrew world, a connection between the prophet whose job was to anoint the king and legitimize the king in God's sight. And Prophecy died out with kingship in the Old Testament because the two were essentially connected. And so when, Saint, when John the Baptist came on the scene, whoa, people were expecting a king because in their mind, prophet, king went together. And indeed, that's what happened with Jesus' baptism. It was, functions as his anointing. This is my son whom I well please. And of course, the baptism of Jesus, he wasn't baptized for the um, repentance. He had nothing to repent of, but to establish baptism as a sacrament for us and, and entering into the church and the gift of salvation and all the spirit um, empowerment that comes with it. And with that, I'd like to close with a challenge because... One thing is very clear about the baptism of Jesus is that this is when his ministry began. This is when he started doing all sorts of miracles and teaching and all that he did. And the amazing thing is, that even though Jesus is, is God, he didn't depend upon himself to do anything. In fact, he emptied himself out so that the Holy Spirit could work through him. So he didn't do anything in and of his own power. And that's the key for us, brothers and sisters. We all have to get to the point where we empty ourselves out so we can be a conduit, do it of God's power, of his, uh, the Holy Spirit's power. It'll look different in every one of us. But that is the challenge. And Jesus is always saying, hey, listen, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> you ever think of it that way? Well, that's how Jesus would like to have you to do it. And that's what the excitement of all the early um, church is all about. They're doing things that are, that are so cool. That's so beyond their own nature, you know. So the baptism of Jesus has a lot to do with you and me in this church and how we should function by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless.